Our text this morning will be coming from Old Testament book of Isaiah. God speaking to the prophet, through the prophet, to the people. So let us prepare ourselves to once again hear and receive the word of God. Isaiah chapter 50, beginning with verse 4. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint. And I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Once again, here ends the reading and the going forth, the hearing and the receiving of God's word. And it will do what God wants it to do to make the changes in us, the transformation in us, to make us more like the one that we follow, Jesus Christ. What can we discover in these words that we have heard today, these words that God has for us today? The title of the passage in many Bibles reads, Israel's sins, Israel's sins, and the servant's obedience. Or some translations say the suffering servant's obedience. Verse 4 begins with those words, The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue. We can identify the me as the servant. But then the question becomes, well, who is that servant? Who is that servant? And before we quickly jump to the safe Sunday school answer, what is that safe Sunday school answer? Jesus. Yeah, that's always the safe Sunday school answer when the teacher asks you, who is this that we're talking about? Jesus. Before we jump to that answer, we might first say, well, it has to be Isaiah. We're reading from the book of Isaiah. After all, God is really upset about the people of Israel, their sinful behavior, their unfaithfulness, their lack of trust in him. And Isaiah seems like he would be the servant that God is raising up out of these people, that God is training up out of these people, that God is grooming for the job of restoring his people back into a right relationship with him. So Isaiah could be the one giving that instructed tongue. Isaiah's words then could be Isaiah's personal testimony that God is faithfully giving him just the right thing to say to these people that would bring them new life, new hope, and new energy. And his words of testimony, testimony would be of a faithful and all-powerful God who awakens him every morning, who does not let him disappear in the night, does not let him stay asleep, the sleep of death, but opens his eyes to see every morning, opens his ears to hear every morning, opens his mind to learn every morning. And what does he see, what does he hear, and what does he learn? That he's not a waste of time. 
that he's not a lost cause, that he's not completely worthless, that someone loves him, that he's valuable, that he means something to someone, and not just someone, but to God. How would that make you feel? How does that make you feel if you think about it? How does that make you feel even to know that it's other people besides God? That someone takes great joy in seeing you, in anticipating you every day. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? To be of value to someone. To be of worth to someone else. That someone wants to see you every day, be around you every day, be in your presence every day. And here, God does that every day when you open your eyes, when he opens your ears, When your heart still beats every day and your mind continues to be open every day, God does not deem you worthless or invaluable. How hopeful is that for you to know? So the servant must be Isaiah. Yeah, but then what about that safe Sunday school answer? Jesus. Kind of makes more sense. Jesus is, because we know the rest of the story, Jesus is the one who offered his back to be beaten, his face to be slapped, punched, spit upon, and all the while that he was mocked and ridiculed And humiliated, he did so without disgrace because he knows the sovereign God. He has a faith in a faithful God. He placed his trust in God who alone is worthy of trust. And he presented himself, he submits himself into the almighty providential power of this sovereign God for protection. So the servant could be Isaiah, the prophet, more likely is Jesus Christ. But here's something else to consider. And I call it my in and out thinking because uh, it's thinking that I have about things and it's, it's kind of like in and out and in and out. In and out and in and out. Through time, through quality, through quantity, in and out and in and out. Doesn't stay like this forever. It's like this. So I'm going to throw it out there, this thinking, and hope that you catch what I'm throwing out. God's people back then, the chosen, Israel, the called out ones, called out for a special purpose to play a servant role in the world among all people, were unfaithful in various ways in the role as God's servant for that purpose, to introduce the rest of the world to God. And all the while, God, who is always faithful, reveals to the unfaithful, there is a remnant among you, a remnant of your people, who will carry on the role that you're not carrying on. And at times, even among the remnant, God raises individuals who will carry on the role that the remnant is not carrying on. Various individuals. 
like Isaiah, like David, like all the others that we read about in the scriptures, and all the others down through the centuries who carry on the role. The servant theme is epitomized and reaches its apex, its highest ideal in the ideal Israelite, the ideal sacrifice, the ideal servant in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. And then back in Isaiah, the servant says these words, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like flint. I set my face like flint. Not Clint, not like Clint, Clint Eastwood's acting specialty was having a face like Flint, more like a grimace, one without emotion, and it only uh, truly dared anyone when he was pushed too far or just over the limit to go ahead and make his day. You know, unlike Clint Eastwood, the suffering servant shows us that he doesn't rely on his own capabilities, he doesn't rely on his own skills, his own strength to vindicate himself or to vindicate others, the suffering servant says, I know I will not be put to shame because he who vindicates me is near. He who vindicates me is always nearby. The Hebrew word for vindicate is closely related to the word righteousness. The vindicator confirms that the one being vindicated is righteous and unjustly suffers. The vindicator confirms that the one that he is vindicating is righteous and unjustly suffers. Honor is not only the person's self-worth, but also the social acceptance of that claim that that person is righteous. And shame is a person's concern for reputation. And if a person cannot maintain their honor, or if society refuses to accept that reputation, then there is dishonor and disgrace. And not only to the individual, but also to their family and also to the class, or to their clan, or to their village, in ever-widening circles, even to their state, or any other group that they belong to. That shame, that disgrace, spreads out. So setting his face like flint, the servant is displaying confidence. The servant is displaying determination. The servant is displaying complete, absolute trust. He's standing firm, he's standing rock hard, and if he should crack, and if he should fail, then he's going to bring dishonor not only upon himself, he's going to bring it on his family, he's going to bring it on to the next wider circle, and the next wider circle, and ultimately he's going to be bringing dishonor and disgrace to his master. On Palm Sunday, Jesus came to Jerusalem, setting his face, determined, setting his face like flint, determined to go through with it, determined to go to the cross, knowing that this was his last week of earthly living. He knew that he would have to go through with the betrayals, with the arrests, with the beatings, the questionings, the humiliation, the pain, the whipping, the scourging, and the crucifixion. But he also knew that the sovereign God, the sovereign Lord, would sustain him. That the sovereign God 
would vindicate him. And he also knew that he'd be leaving his role as the ideal servant. Now he'd be leaving that role back into the hands of someone else. Us. The in and the out. The in and the out. So now the role comes back to us. He wants us to not try to vindicate ourselves by our own efforts, by our own abilities, but, and by our own um, works, but depend upon our sovereign God who sustains us. He wants us to set our faces like flint with determination to follow him because we have a loving, powerful master who can be counted on to testify for us in the only court that really matters. The scripture says, who will bring charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. You and I are the church. We are the servant of today. We are the body of the servant. We are reminded of what he did this week, setting his face like flint, being determined to be faithfully obedient to God in the face of all suffering, to do God's work of restoring and vindicating others to God and calling us to setting our faces to be faithful to the same faithful God with the same mission. May God's Holy Spirit enable us and empower us to set our faces like flint to follow our Savior. Amen.